and a very warm welcome. You're watching Sunset TV and this is our special program, Democracies of the World. The program where we bring you a detailed picture of the latest news of events affecting the democracies across the world. We'll also talk about the functioning and makeup of their democratic institutions. In today's edition, our focus will be on the parliamentary system of Japan the nation that will have its general elections shortly. Over the next half an hour, we'll also talk about Canada's new cabinet that is being sworn in this week. I'm your host, Bhavna Nayar. Let's start the program with our first report coming in from Canada. In Canada, where its Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will unveil his new government on October 26th, nearly a month after his Liberal Party secured a minority government in a hard-fought elections. The House of Commons will meet for the first time on November 22nd. Trudeau called for the mid-term polls, hoping to turn his minority government into a majority one. But the September 20th elections gave the ruling Liberal Party 160 seats, 10 short of majority and just three more than what it captured in 2019. The results were almost similar for the principal opposition Conservative Party that secured 119 seats, two seats less than its 2019 tally. Trudeau has called the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic top priority for his new government. He has promised to deliver on commitments to establish standardized proof of vaccination for Canadians traveling internationally. Trudeau has already indicated that Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Christia Freeland will remain in her post. Japan has officially kicked off its general election campaign as the country will head into a national polls on 31st October to choose a new parliament and indirectly elect the country's new government. This after the country's new Prime Minister Fumo Kishida dissolved the lower house of parliament on 14th October, setting the stage for general ele elections. At stake will be how Japan faces potential coronavirus resurgence and revives its battered economy. <laughs> Japan's new Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is seeking a mandate for his policies in the October 31 parliamentary election. On 14th October, Fumio Kishida dissolved the lower house of parliament to pave the way for Japan's first elections post-pandemic. Kishida was officially appointed Japan's 100th Prime Minister on the 4th of October after he won the ruling party's leadership election on 29 September. He took over the reins from Yoshihide Suga, who lasted just a year as Prime Minister. Suga's support was battered due to his approach to the fight against coronavirus and insistence on holding the Tokyo Olympics despite a rise in COVID-19 cases. Kishida will be seeking to maintain a majority for his conservative Liberal Democratic Party along with its coalition partner, the Komiuto Party. Kishida has promised voters the politics of trust and empathy. He is pushing for a new capitalism and has reportedly promised to raise salaries for the middle class, while committing to also bolster the government's COVID-19 response. The Prime Minister has also pledged to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific amid rising tensions with China and North Korea. Meanwhile, the country's largest opposition party, the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan, led by Yukio Adano, has announced a plan to focus on closing Japan's income gap with wealth redistribution to win the election. The CDPJ also highlighted support to issues like the same-sex marriage and different surnames for couples. The last lower house election was held in 2017 under Shinzo Abe, who pulled the long-ruling LDP further to the right while serving as Japan's longest-serving Prime Minister. In that vote, the LDP and its coalition partner, New Komiuto, won 310 seats, or two-thirds of the chamber. Opposition parties have struggled to win enough votes to form a new government after the brief rule of the now-defunct Democratic Party of Japan from 2009 to 2012. Let's talk about how Japan's parliament works. Japan is a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system of government based on separation of powers. The government runs under the framework established by the Constitution of Japan, adopted in 1947. The Prime Minister is the head of the cabinet and the head of the government. Let's take a detailed look at this parliamentary structure of Japan.
Japan is a unitary state divided into 47 prefectures. The metropolitan government administers the capital, Tokyo. Japan's 1947 constitution recognizes local self-government that carries out many national policies and programs. However, its political hierarchy consists of various levels like the emperor, the legislative branch, the executive and the judiciary. The emperor is the symbol of the state and only performs ceremonial duties. The National Diet is a bicameral legislature. It has a lower house, the House of Representatives with 465 members and an upper house, the House of Councillors with 245 members. Both are directly elected under a parallel voting system. Both houses meet in the National Diet Building in Tokyo. The Diet passes laws and formally selects the Prime Minister. The Diet may direct the Emperor in appointing and removing chiefs of the executive and judicial members. The Diet was first convened as Imperial Diet in 1890 under the Meiji Constitution. It took its current form in 1947 after the nation adopted a post-war constitution. Elections for the House of Representatives are every four years. Half of the House of Councillors is elected every three years. Besides national elections, there are prefectural and municipal elections. As the head of the cabinet, the Prime Minister leads the executive branch. The Emperor appoints the Prime Minister after being selected by the Diet members. The Prime Minister appoints and can dismiss the Ministers of the State. Confidence in the House of the Representatives is necessary for him to stay in the office. The Cabinet consists of the Ministers appointed by the Prime Minister and are usually members of the Diet. The judiciary system is an independent system in the Japanese political hierarchy. Japan has five types of courts. Supreme Court, High Court, Family Court, District Court and Summary Court. The Supreme Court heads the judicial system. With the consensus of the Prime Minister, the Emperor along with the Cabinet members appoints the higher judicial members. Moving on to now USA, the next report says that US President Joe Biden has nominated Indian-American aerospace and defense expert Ravi Chaudhary to a key position in the Pentagon. A former Air Force officer, Chaudhary has been nominated for the position of the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Installations, Energy and the Environment. The United States Senate needs to confirm his position before he is sworn in. Chaudhary previously served as a senior executive at the U.S. Department of Transportation as the Director of Advanced Programs and Innovation, Office of the Commercial Space at the Federal Aviation Administration. In this role, Chaudhary was responsible for the execution of advanced development and research programs in the support of the FFA's Commercial Space Transportation Mission. Chaudhary, who hails from Virginia, has even supported NASA's International Space Station Protection Activities to ensure the safety of NASA astronauts. The Army General who seized power in Myanmar in February has been excluded from an annual summit of regional leaders later this month. Instead, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations agreed to invite a non-political representative for Myanmar to its October 26-28 summit instead of the country's military leader. It is an unprecedented move for the 10-member bloc, which traditionally avoids interfering in its members' affairs. ASEAN said the military had not done enough to end the turmoil in Myanmar. In August, they named the Prime Minister and said the country's state of emergency would be extended as the fighting between the army and militia forces opposed to the military coup continued. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the coup, which ended a decade of tentative democracy and economic reform.
Thousands of its opponents have been arrested, including Aung San Suu Kyi. Island nation Cape Verde, one of the Africa's most stable democracies, voted for the new president this week as the country tries to right its tourism-driven economy from the blow dealt by the coronavirus pandemic. Opposition candidate and former Prime Minister Jos Maria Neves won Cape Verde's presidential election on Sunday as his main rival, the ruling party's flag bearer, Carlos Vega, conceded defeat. According to data made public by the election authorities, with 93,149 ballots, Neves secured 51.7% of the votes, while Vega emerged second after guaranteeing 77,018 votes, accounting for 42.4% of the vote share. Five other candidates all won less than 2% each. The first place finisher must secure more than 50% to avoid a second round runoff. Neves was elected as Prime Minister in 2001. He went on to hold the longest mandate in the country's history, being elected three consecutive times until 2016. The 61-year-old is the former president and deputy leader of the leftist African Party for the independence of Cape Verde. The polls mark the end of the second and last term of George Carlos Fonseca, the fourth president in Cape Verde's history, since the country's independence from Portugal in 1975. Cape Verde has a semi-parliamentary system where the Prime Minister holds executive power and the President acts as a head of the state. In the lead-up to Sunday's vote, political discussions focused on issues like urban violence, the need for a non-partisan public sector and diversification of the economy. But Neves will inherit the responsibility for stabilising the nation's tourism-driven economy after the COVID-19 pandemic drove it deep into recession. Cape Verde continues to battle an economic recession after output shrank by 14.8% in 2020, partly due to the country's dependence on tourism, which accounts for 25% of its economy. The economy is expected to bounce back this year with growth of nearly 6%. Cape Verde is home to just over 5 lakh people living on 10 arid islands scattered some 500 kilometers off Guinea-Bissau and Senegal. It is estimated that more than 7 lakh live abroad, predominantly in Europe and the United States of America. The 10 island archipelago off West Africa's coast is often praised as an exemplary democracy in the continent, as it continues to rank high amongst indexes of transparency and political freedom. The recent election is the seventh election since Cape Verde's transition to free and multi-party elections in 1991. Since then, the country has never recorded any violence linked to election campaigns or their results. Time now for a short break. On the other side, we bring you all details from the United Kingdom where the country has set out a net zero strategy as it gears up to host COP26. Welcome back. You're watching our special program, Democracies of the World. And now the story is coming in from UK. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson set out his ambition on Tuesday for a green revolution that he hopes will force countries around the world to kick their addiction to fossil fuels and commit to net zero carbon emissions. Britain, at the end of the month, will host the COP26 UN climate talks in Glasgow, Scotland, which aims to strengthen global action on climate change. Addressing the House of Commons, Energy Minister Greg Hans said that the Britain's net zero strategy will create 4,40,000 new jobs in green industries by 2030. The net zero strategy published by the British government on Tuesday is aimed at ending the country's contribution to climate change. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson led lawmakers from all major political parties in a service this week for slain lawmaker David Ames. The House of Commons held a special two-hour session to pay its respect to Amis, the Conservative MP, who had stabbed to death when he met constituents at a church on October 15th in east of London. Lawmakers from all the parties stood in the Commons to recall Amis fondly as a hard-working legislator. In his tribute, Johnson said Amis had been one of the nicest, kindest and most gentle individuals ever to grace these benches. A 25-year-old British man with Somali heritage, Ali Harbi Ali, was arrested at the scene and is being held under the Terrorism Act on the suspicion of murder.
The death of the popular MP who had served the parliament for almost 40 years and was knighted by Queen Elizabeth in 2015 shocked Britain, especially its politicians. It came five years after Labour Party MP Joe Cox was shot and stabbed to death by a far-right extremist. Now Britain's Queen Elizabeth praised the spirit of the people of Wales during the pandemic as she opened the sixth session of Welsh Parliament in Cardiff on October 14th. In her first visit to Wales in five years, she told the Welsh Parliament that everyone owes a debt of gratitude to those who have served their communities. She was accompanied by the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. A 21-gun salute in Cardiff Bay marked the Queen's arrival in the city. The ceremony was supposed to be held in May 2021 after the election but was delayed due to the coronavirus pandemic. The event marks the ceremonial start of the term since May's Senate election which returned Labour First Minister Mark Drakeford to power. The Wales Act 2017 established this parliament on a new basis and you've used this legislation to help the public better understand your work and to include more people in the democratic process. As a result, this parliament is now recognised in law as Seneth Cymru, or the Welsh Parliament. And now the report coming in from Tunisia, where the European Union has advised the Tunisian President Kai Saeed to restore democratic order in the country and reopen parliament. EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell told EU lawmakers during a parliamentary session that the Tunisian parliament cannot stay closed indefinitely. Borrell urged the Tunisian president to set a clear timetable for the reopening of the parliament. Kai Said suspended parliament in July and fired the prime minister in what his opponent said was a coup. He, however, enjoys the support of many Tunisians. Last week, Prime Minister Najla Boudin, who Saeed appointed last month, announced a new cabinet which has 10 women, including the Prime Minister. The Parliament in Lebanon has agreed on Tuesday to hold the parliamentary elections on 27th March 2022 instead of May 8, which was previously planned. This gives Prime Minister Najib Mikati's government a few months to try to secure an IMF recovery plan amid a deepening economic meltdown. Lebanon's financial crisis, which the World Bank labelled one of the deepest depressions of modern history, had been compounded by political deadlock for over a year before McCarthy put together a cabinet alongside President Michel Aoun. The currency has lost 90% of its value and the three quarters of the population have been propelled into poverty. The upcoming Lebanon elections will become the nation's first after the popular revolt in October 2019 when millions of Lebanon citizens sought a political system change. Once a new parliament is elected, the Mikati's cabinet will only act in a caretaker role until a new prime minister is given a vote of confidence and tasked with forming a new government. That's all we have in this edition of our program on the world's democracies. Please connect with us on various social media platforms. You can also send in your feedback at Sunset TV at sunset.nic.in. We'll bring you more stories of different democracies in our next edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more informative programs on Sunset TV. Till then, goodbye. Namaskar.